This new government has been saying that cleaning up the environment is a priority. But just who is to blame and what can be done is uncertain. So CNN special correspondent and environmentalist Philippe Cousteau joins us now live from D.C. So Philippe, what can be done? Do we need new laws or do we just need enforcement of existing ones? Well, in many cases, Patricia, it's as much about enforcing existing laws as creating new ones. There are a lot of reports, and many of them anecdotal, but still reports coming out of China that there are pollution and, and factories dumping waste uh, uh, at night when the officials aren't around. So I think uh, certainly enforcement and more investment in the enforcement agencies is important. Transparency as well. It's been very difficult to get reliable figures from the Chinese government to the extent of this type of pollution. And then a more robust civil society is, is also very important. That's starting to grow in China. It's certainly been controversial over the last few decades, but that is an effective, we've learned in, in Europe and the United States, an effective watchdog uh, uh, where, where government and, and industry don't always do the best, uh, best job of monitoring themselves. And we were just taking a look at some of those pictures from the red rivers to the barrels of uh, the chemical toxic waste. What are the dangers to people, to fish, to the water itself? Well, those are shocking images and, and certainly just a, a sampling of, of the ones that are coming out of, of China. Certainly, it's important to remember that this is not just an environmental concern that's affecting water quality and, and fish kills or fish die-offs. This is affecting people, and this is as much a, a health concern and an economic concern and a security concern. A World Bank estimate uh, is that Chinese farmers are four times more likely to die of liver cancer, twice as likely to die of stomach cancer than the global average. And certainly water is the most critical substance that we all uh, need every single day. So there's a, a huge economic cost. There's a huge human health cost to this. And as you see unrest and destabilization of, of Chinese markets and of these basic needs of the people, uh, I think it's also going to have knockoff effects on the Chinese economy at large, which has impacts on the world at large. So these are very, very serious issues and ones that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that China is starting to acknowledge and starting to face because left unchecked, they will have very, very catastrophic consequences for the Chinese economy and the Chinese people and the world at whole. And taking a look at those, those images that we've been showing, you just have to wonder, is it even reversible, the damage that we've done so far? I think there's a lot that China can learn from the mistakes of the EU and the United States. Of course, in the 1970s, a famous river in Ohio, the Cuyahoga River, was on fire and helped to usher in a, a wave of, of Clean Water, Clean Air Act and, and legislation that helped to clean up our nation's waterways, the Hudson River in New York, etc. that are so much cleaner now than a few decades ago. There's a lot that China can do, I believe, but it has to step up to the, to the problem, face it, be transparent with the issues empower civil society to be, be effective watchdogs and really do now uh, what it can to begin to clean up and, and not be willing to sacrifice the health of the environment for economic growth because in the long run, as we've learned time and time again around the world, it will cost more to clean up than the value and the money that's made by polluting it in the first place.